You know, my advice would be keep these fragrances to yourself. Keep them a secret. Sometimes that's not a bad thing. So when your friends ask you, man, what is it that you're wearing? That smells really good. I want to get it for myself. Just say it's the new Armani. You know, hey, I'm wearing Paco Rabanne. Because after all, that's kind of the go-to response for people who aren't in the fragrance community. I have had this happen to me pretty much every interaction that I've had with people who aren't into the community but happen to ask me what I'm wearing or they just hear about what I do here on YouTube. So I always ask, you know, they ask me what my go-to is and so I tell them, you know, whatever it is at the time. And I ask them, you know, hey, what's your signature scent? What's something that you wear all the time? And they say, Paco Rabanne. And it's just like, cool, yeah, I have that one too. It's like, man, there are so many Paco Rabanne fragrances, right? There are tons of them. And I've had that answer several times. Oh, I wear Armani, or I wear Dior. Okay, so that's what you could do with these, right? Just, just tell them, yeah, I'm wearing Paco Rabanne because these are so good that I would recommend trying to keep them to yourself for as long as you can. Now, obviously, if you have friends who are in the community they probably already know about these or will find out at some point. But for your average guy on the street walking by or just for people who just aren't into this sort of thing, you know, you can kind of gatekeep these a little bit because they can uh, give you that advantage. They can give you that edge because each of these has their own unique little quality about them that helps them to stand out among the rest. There are so many fragrances out there. These are going to help you uh, differentiate yourself at least a little uh, without taking it too far. We're trimming the fat here. We're keeping this real lean. We've got, uh, looks like, six fragrances, okay? So we'll go through each one of these. I'll explain my positioning on why I think that they are suitable for this video. Let's just get started with the first one. It's uh, Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. Le Parfum. Say that two or three times fast. Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. It starts to get a little bit tricky. It's got Amber Extreme, Oak, and Saffron. This is uh, the new kid on the block, at least as of right now. Um, end of October 24. It's the, the latest ocean. And again, you know, this is like uh, very monotonous here, but not an oceanic smelling scent at all. Really, neither is the original. The Eau de Parfum isn't either. It's kind of a bizarre uh, naming convention for these. I think they could have clarified that a little bit more. They're a little bit misleading, but if you know, you know. Don't buy these expecting an aquatic. There really aren't any aquatics in the Lunarosa Ocean line, but there are plenty out there in general on the market. Um, I would <laughs> point you to the Armani Aqua de Joes or something if you're after a really decent aquatic for kind of similar price range here. Instead, this is a little bit more of a, a warm spicy from that saffron. Get a really nice woody, slightly semi-dry oak accord. The Amber Extreme is, is kind of providing a little bit of a, not necessarily ambroxan to take, but more of a an amber smell. So amber is in like, you know, MFK Grand Soir. I mean, not to that level, but that type of amber rather than, you know, fuzzy, bright, blue fragrance ambroxan. Saffron, it's not used all that often. I mean, at least in comparison to vanilla and tonka and things like that, but it, it definitely is no stranger in the men's fragrance game, just not as common as other notes, but it's used here in a really nice way. Again, kind of providing some of that warmth, some of that complexity, some of that depth. Typically when you see saffron, you're getting a scent that has more layers to it than what you would typically get from most designer releases. So I think when you break it down, this is a, a designer release that's a little bit different. I really like it. Uh, I think it's, it's better than the original Ocean Eau de Toilette. I still really like the Eau de Parfum a lot. If I had to choose a favor between the Eau de Parfum and the Le Parfum, man, I don't know. You know, I guess it depends on the day because I really like them both. Man, it might be this one though. It's really good. It definitely surprising in a good way. It's it's one that's kind of working its way on discounters now. So once you can start getting it for, I would say, below $100, that's where it really starts to make a lot of sense to pick up. If it's still on the higher end right now, maybe you could push this one off and, and go for something else if you're not wanting to spend the money, uh, but the price will come down. Next up, we have Invictus Parfum by Raban, okay? 
So that's the other thing. You can just tell them you're wearing Raban now because it's no longer Paco Raban. We'll see how long it takes for people to catch on to that, not in the community, right? Because it's been Paco Raban for years. I mean, since inception, unless I'm missing something. So no longer can people say they're wearing Paco Raban. It's now just Raban. And I understand this is an Invictus fragrance, right? Typically, you're not getting underrated or or not popular fragrances from the Invictus line. You're not extracting anything from there because they pretty much all get popular, I guess with the exception of a couple. I, you know, Invictus Intense never really took off and got super big. I feel like Invictus Platinum has been pretty under the radar and kind of forgotten. You know, the new Victories are really, really good. And I think in, uh, Victory Elixir is one of their best. But I also think Invictus Parfum is one of their best currently out right now also. It's got a nice soap note, marine notes, quite a bit of lavender as well, uh, like cashmere wood. It just is a very soapy, fresh, clean, marine, aquatic scent. I, not necessarily aquatic, more so marine. Is there a difference? To me, yes. Not necessarily straight up watery notes in, in, in that type of way. Doesn't really have the same level of saltiness as some other Invictus fragrances, but it does have a little bit of a oceanic environment feeling to it. So I think, you know, when it comes down to it, it's a really, really wearable, no-brainer, easygoing scent that's going to be a great compliment getter that's already working down to a really reasonable price online that has great performance, something worth looking into. Again, it's not going to take long for this one to probably get decently popular, uh, but if you can pull this one off for a while without anybody else around you wearing it, I think it's going to serve you well. And, you know, we don't know for sure. Maybe this one won't take off and get super popular like some others have. I guess we just have to wait and see. I do think that the marketing angle on this one is really solid. The bottle redesign or update looks incredible. I think it's very sharp looking. I mean, literally, it's got some angular lines to it. Nice gold accenting. Um, it, I think it's probably one of the best looking Invictus bottles as well. So that in and of itself might be enough to get people into it. But, you know, hey, if somebody asks, just tell them you're wearing Invictus. I mean, it's not really a lie either. All right, now this next one's going to be more expensive to begin with, so that will be a you know a, a, a limiting factor as far as people getting into it. And really, at the time of me shooting this right now, and at least to my awareness, I don't know of any clones of it right now. Uh, at least, maybe unless I'm missing something, and they're probably out there. I just haven't seen any come to market in a really big way yet. Nothing's been hyped up that I've seen. So it's Elysium O Intense by Roja Parfums. Plenty of clones of the original. Again, this one's newer and I just haven't seen it yet. It's got grapefruit, rhubarb, juniper berries, black currant, and of course that signature vetiver note. And also, you know, ambergris, ambroxan, whatever, further on in the base, which is also uh, corresponding with the original Elysium. A lot of those notes do carry over. So the note breaks down do look kind of similar. And I just find this one to be a little bit brighter, a bit fresher off the top. The vetiver, while it is still a prominent accord, it, it's pushed back a little bit, not quite as, as vetiver heavy as the original. And personally, I think Elysium is very much a summer scent. I've worn it mostly in summertime over the years, and I've been wearing Elysium for a long time now. But I do like this one for its added level of brightness, which I do think makes it a little bit easier to pull off when it is really hot out. Man, you still get some of that signature vetiver Elysium combo buried behind everything. Uh, but what does stick out and, and grab you first is just the added layer of, of bright citrus effervescence that just sparkles off the opening. I love the frosted glass bottle on this one. You know, not that we're doing, uh, you know, a beauty pageant here, but I think this bottle looks better than the uh, original Elysium bottle as well. So... You know, these flankers, they're charging a lot and they're they are pumping them out, but hey, at least they're making improvements on the presentation and sometimes improvements on the scent. Would I take this over my original Elysium? No, probably not. Between the two, I'm still going with the original Parfum Cologne or Parfum. But that being said, this O Intense version is no slouch either. And given that it's it's still relatively new, it's not cloned heavily yet, you could grab this one, pull it off and 
it's going to be different enough to help you stand out. And it's not that a lot of people are probably going to be wearing the original Elysium around you anyway. So even that one wouldn't be a bad contender. But man, this is a good one to keep to yourself. It could be a, a staple scent. Maybe not something that you wear every day given its price point, but it can be one where people correlate it with you. And when you walk in wearing this, they know what's up. Gentlemen's Society Extreme by Givenchy, another new one, or you know, newer as of earlier on this year. But like most new releases, it's already on discounter, so that's not too much of a problem. You know, I wouldn't go out and pay retail for this. You can get it for under a hundred dollars right now. It's under retail discount price. It probably will creep down a little bit more, but that's kind of where it's sitting right now. It's got coffee, vanilla, and orris root, also known as iris. It's a fantastic coffee scent. And I'm always skeptical with coffee scents because it's happened a time or two where they, they put that note in the note breakdown and I get excited and I get the scent in and no coffee to uh, be perceived. And that's not the case here. In fact, it's a really strong coffee scent. So much so, at least off the opening, that you know some people might not like it. Uh, I think you know when it dries down, that's a different story. It does start to settle off or round off, get a little bit more smooth. And I think in that situation, the dry down is the, the bulk majority of the scent. And so I don't think people around you will necessarily have an issue with that. But I'm talking for like you guys, people buying it. You know, if you're not a big fan of coffee, the opening will be a hang up for you. So this would be something I would consider before diving straight in. Now, again, for me, this is what I'm looking for. I love coffee, the taste, the smell, like actual coffee. And so when that translates over into a fragrance that I can put on my skin and wear, not like rubbing coffee beans or coffee on my skin, that's a really cool thing. And so I'm glad that they were true to that and they, they put it in there to a pretty heavy extent. Now, there's a bit of iris, like I mentioned, but it's not a full-on iris scent. You know, I feel like I have to issue that every time iris is mentioned just because of all the popular iris fragrances out there. Prada Lome, Dior Homme Intense, you know, Valentino Homme Intense, <laughs> Gentleman Eau de Parfum, so kind of carrying over some of that iris from some previous Gentleman fragrances. So not full-on in this instance. It's just there a little bit to add a bit of a creaminess. Definitely some woods as well. I don't know what they have listed off, probably a sandalwood for sure, but I just the opening, that's where it's at. Beautiful opening, nice roasted coffee beans, very rich, just super interesting stuff. So I don't see this one catching on big time and outside of the community. So I think you're pretty much in the clear. If you wanna pick this one up and have it be your signature scent that pretty much nobody else around you is gonna be wearing, you could very well do that. Let's go for a cheapie up next. It's a clone, but it's kind of a hybrid clone. I've talked about those before. Dumont Nitro Red. This was kind of the hype beast of the summer, apparently. And I was so incredibly late to it that it's uh, almost not funny. But yeah, that's kind of what it is. It got really popular, I think, on TikTok, which I don't get on TikTok, which explains why I was so late to this. And I had one discounter reach out to me saying, hey, do you want this? And I just, no, not really. I just uh, never got back to him. And eventually I'm like, okay, I should get this. So I bought a bottle. I think I paid $34, $35 for it, cheapy price. And well, turns out I really like it a lot. And I wish I would have gotten in on it sooner, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I kind of got it towards the uh, tail end of summer. So started to run out of time quickly especially with all the other new releases that were coming out that I was trying to test. But this is, will be a heavily worn cheapie for me next summer. It's got watermelon, apple, lavender, and bergamot. Wow, the watermelon note is what makes this one stand out. It's so underutilized in men's fragrances. I mean, I could think of, gosh, I don't even know if I could think of one off the top of my head. I know I have them. I know First Instinct has a melon accord, but not really watermelon. Mm, I don't know if I could think of one actually. Help me out down below, guys. What are some watermelon fragrances for men or unisex? That's fine too. Let me know because I'm not thinking of any. I don't even know if I have any at this point, but I would like to get more because I really do like that note. That's my favorite part about this one, hands down. That opening with that juicy, sweet watermelon and apple combination, 
it's next to nothing else out there. It's so good. So what's this similar to? It's actually kind of similar to Rasasi Hawas, Invictus Aqua, that sort of thing. Now, Hawas has a plum apple combination, so it's a different type of fruity sweetness than the watermelon apple and bergamot combination going on here. So while this is in a similar ballpark, there are differences too. And um, not quite as strong as Hawas on my skin, but still plenty of performance out of this, especially for the price. Again, I think I paid $34, $35. I've seen it as low as uh, $29, $30, um, maybe even a bit less, maybe even $25 you know, on rare instances where a tester comes up or there's just a random low price deal on it. But you know, anything under $40, bucks, you're, you're safe. Good purchase there. Yeah, I could I could smell that opening all day long. I'm telling you, it's a beauty. So sometimes it can be a little bit uh, kind of on the fence about jumping into the hype, especially when it's a cheapy and it's kind of a, a clone brand or a lesser known brand and you don't know what you're getting into. This one was a win in my book. I really like it. And as I mentioned, next summer when I want something cheap and easy to throw on, this will be kind of at the top of my list. I can see that one being mostly popular in the fragrance community. Outside of that, it's not going to be in retailers, Macy's, Sephora, etc. I don't see it getting all that big. So that would be a nice little secret weapon of sorts too. And last up for this video, we have Killian Old Fashioned. It's new, hot off the presses. Uh, it was, I think it was announced earlier on in the year and just more so recently became available. Something like that. Um, but it was an, an immediate purchase for me. It, it was like, uh, didn't require any thought process is what I'm trying to say. I knew I was getting it just without even having to think about it. It's got wheat, tolu balsam, immortel, and cedar. Had to look off to the side and cheat. I don't have this one memorized yet. Okay, now this one here, it is not going to be for everybody. Blind buy, eh, on the fence. I wouldn't say full-on blind buy. A lot of these Pretty blind by safe. Cost prohibitive some, like Elysium, O Intense, but most of them are pretty easy going. This one, it truly is a boozy scent. Smells a little bit like uh, Killian Single Malt, which I, after years, I finally got a bottle of. Took me a long time, had to go on eBay and pay an outrageous price that, you know, we don't have to talk about, but finally got it. Now this one comes along, I don't know, a couple years later after I finally got that bottle, and it is similar. Uh, the other thing is, it smells a little bit kind of like apple brandy. Not so much apple brandy on the rocks, which is, you know, in this similar bottle, closer to regular apple brandy, you know, in the standard Killian line, black bottles. And again, it's not 100% close to that one. I would say it would be closer to something like single malt with that wheat note here that it kind of gives off. Or was it a wheat? Yeah, it's a wheat and kind of tolu balsam, a balsamic, heavy, thick sweetness, and a ton of a boozy accord. I mean, they're not listing off whiskey or bourbon or anything. It's undoubtedly there. And uh, for some reason, I can't smell it at all off the atomizer. I sprayed it once. I'm not going to waste any more. I'm cheap, guys. I don't know why. But this is one that I would recommend being on the fence about. If you're not into, blind, if you're not into boozy scents, I wouldn't blind buy it. If you are, if you like Killian Apple Brandy, Killian Single Malt, if you've smelled that one, if you like those, I would say you're in the clear to go ahead and pick this one up without trying it. And we do have samples of that one over on our website, decantcenter.com. If you're looking to try before you buy, we would love to help you out and earn your business. We've got some of the best prices around, free shipping over 49, free sample in every order. Go give us a try. And I'll link everything else down below as well. So if you're looking for full bottles or samples, whatever it is, I'll get you taken care of. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.